Galatians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul said, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Notice that tender relationship of a pastor with his people, a real shepherd who's concerned that those who come to faith in Christ might grow in their likeness to Christ. It's like a mother giving birth to a child, but then it's the pains of parenthood as you work with those children and long for them to grow into mature and, uh, and strong adults. Paul has that same desire. I am longing to see Christ formed in you, but he's concerned. So he says, how I wish I could be with you now and change my tone. His tone was parental, but it was also a tone of uh, being upset, confused. He said, I am perplexed about you, how you came to faith in Christ by believing in Jesus, that your sins were forgiven by God's grace, and now you want to be saved or continue your growth or um, maintain your salvation by keeping the law. Paul says in verse 21 of chapter 4, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you aware of what the law says? Do you really understand what this means? I mean, you either keep the whole thing, or if you break it in one point, as James tells us, you're guilty of breaking all the law. It's impossible to gain acceptance before God by law-keeping. So Paul says, let me tell you a story. It's a true story, and I'm going to make it into an allegory. An allegory is where you take a, a story and you apply a hidden meaning to it or an important spiritual meaning, a moral to the story. And Paul comes right out and says, I'm going to tell you a story, and it has a figurative or a spiritual application. And it's a story that the Jews would have known very well, for he says in verse 22, it is written that Abraham had two sons. The father of faith has already been discussed, Abraham. He is the spiritual leader of the Jews, and he had two sons, one by the slave woman, Hagar, because God had made a promise to Abraham that he was going to have a son, but a decade had passed and there was no son. So Sarah, his wife, who was barren, gave her handmaid, Hagar, to Abraham to have a child and it would really be Sarah's child. But it was the slave woman, Hagar. But then Sarah later does have a child. So Hagar's child is Ishmael, and Sarah's child is going to be Isaac. He's the son of promise. So he's comparing now these two mothers and these two sons. One was a slave woman and Sarah the free woman. He says in verse 23, his son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh. It was the normal process of birth. But his son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise because both Abraham and Sarah were well beyond child, -bearing, child bearing years. And so it was a miracle that actually took place. He was the son of promise. Then the interpretation is given in verse 24. These things are being taken as, as an allegory, figuratively. The two women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Hagar stands for Mount Sinai. So you're talking about the covenant of Moses connected with the giving of the law. Mount Sinai in Arabia, this corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem. As Paul is speaking in the first century, it was the uh, capital of Judaism, and it was all about law-keeping and ceremony. And Paul went on to say that this covenant, this woman, uh, this son, it deals with bondage and slavery. The application is that if you go back to Judaism, you go back to a system that enslaves you and gives you no freedom and ultimately no forgiveness. The conscience is constantly guilty because that sacrifices have to be made every year. And then the contrast is the Jerusalem that is from above. It's a heavenly city. It is free. 
and Jerusalem is the mother of, of us all, referring now to the to Sarah and the son of promise. And then there's a quotation in verse 27, actually taken from Isaiah 54, for it is written, be glad barren woman, you who never bore a child, shout for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. The context there in Isaiah talks about the time of captivity where they did not have the freedom and they were in bondage. But then when they came back in the exile, there was the freedom and uh, there was the, uh, the prosperity of many children being born. Also the fact that Sarah was barren, but then according to the promise, she became the mother of a, of a family that was like the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore, so many that it cannot be counted. Verse 28, now you are like Isaac, you are children of the promise. Paul says all of this just to remind them that you don't go back to a system that's broken, to a system that's been replaced, that's obsolete, that has now gone to from the old covenant to the new covenant, from Moses as the leader to Jesus, to a perfect high priest, who died in our place and saves us by grace. Always remember that the gospel is the gospel of God. It's not a gospel of our law keeping. It's a gospel of his mercy and grace. Never be moved away from that. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we are children of promise, that we are indeed children who by faith receive the righteousness of God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, so that our salvation rests upon your goodness and not on ours. Thank you for keeping the law for us. We could never do it ourselves. Thank you for dying and being cursed for us, taking our sin upon yourself on the cross so that we could have life that never ends. Oh Lord, may we never go back to religion as we long to keep a relationship based on your love and grace. In Jesus' name, amen.